Kissing Axel came easy and natural. Yes, my feelings for him developed over time, but by the time I dared to kiss him, it seemed very natural to me. It helped that he felt the same about me, regardless of my familial background. So my story with Alex began a few months back. No, actually scratch that. I had known Axel since my middle school, and much better in my high school, when he had just cracked the college admission. He was only a year older than me, but carried with him the kind of wisdom that my middle-aged dad severely lacked. It was a shame indeed that I had to compare Axel to my dad of all people, because right where my dad lost, Axel won. Now, that kind of compassion requires an introduction, so here we go. My dad started drinking soon after he lost a good amount of money in the shares. He was an impatient man and wanted to get rich as quickly as possible. Fate wasn't on his side, nor had he heeded any useful Buffett warnings, and he lost a good chunk of his life savings. He put some more in and ended up losing more. Stress had become his companion by then, and so did cheap liquor. But that wasn't all. He needed to blame someone for his misfortune, and he chose his wife and his son, aka my mom and me. We're the perfect candidate. We live with him, and we financially relied on him. Everything we did, even the way we moved or breathed or even talked, seemed to aggravate him and his issues. He didn't start beating me until I hit 12. He claimed he waited so much only because he wanted to make sure I was at the age where I could tolerate those beatings and not die of them. It was very considerate of him, I could scoff. It wasn't like it was in his nature or that he was always in the mood to hurt his only family. No, sometimes he was nicer. Sometimes, when he was sober, he'd bring mom gifts and spend time with me like a good dad. We'd be wary of him because anything could trigger his anger bouts, but this constant back and forth in his behavior was probably the reason we tolerated him for so long. It was confusing. A moment, he was the demon itself. The next, he was nice. As much as I hated him, I couldn't deny I was also scared of him. Whenever he was home, I'd either lock myself in my bedroom or stay mute in his presence. When he wanted a reaction out of me, I'd give him. When he wanted me to stay silent, I would do that too. I was like a puppet with him. I was scared of him. Whenever I was locked in my room, he rarely bothered me, so I knew that the locked door kept me safe. Until it didn't. I had just turned 17 and was in the last year of high school when my dad came hollering and banging on my bedroom door. I still remember it was past 11 and I was asleep. I was rudely awoken by his constant banging. Scared for my life, I could barely hear my mom screaming at him to stop. I stayed seated and trembling on my bed. I stared at the locked door with fear. For a second then, it went silent. I didn't realize I was crying until my dad opened the door and said, Oh, I'm glad you know why it's coming for you this time, you son of a... He was blabbering and slobbering. I couldn't gather what he wanted to say. But then he mentioned a colleague of his, and how he see me passionately and vulgarly making out with an older man. He'd immediately come to my dad and chide him for not caring for his son and for letting him fall into the trap of this stupid Gen Z bullcrap. And my dad lost it. He said, You have hurt me. Can't you be a man for once? Then he started beating me. He beat me because he just found out I was gay and that I like kissing men. How unique. I read about this kind of situation so many times on so many forums, and yet I didn't know how to escape from it. I was frozen in my spot, and he landed punch after punch, slap after slap. Eventually, when my mom begged that I run away and not be here, I couldn't help but heed her warnings. I was worried that any more time with me, and he'd kill me. That was how I found myself in the nearest community park. It was late at night and I had to make sure I wasn't seen by any cop. I knew that wouldn't end well, or at least I knew I was scared to mention any of this to a stranger, so I stayed quiet on the messiest night of my life. I assumed it was past 12, and the only sound that I could hear was my own sniffling. As I mused over my stupid life, I distantly noticed the sound of shoes against the concrete roads around me. I knew who it was long before Axel stopped by my side. He was breathing harshly, no question because of the running, and sat down beside me without a word. Axel was my longtime neighbor and a member of a well-respected family in the neighborhood. He was a friend and my crush. He was, in the most intimate terms, my gay awakening. So when he sat beside me, I couldn't help but feel ashamed of my state. He looked fine in his tracksuit, 
and I looked like a real mess. I was sure I was bleeding somewhere, even he could see. Hey, he said, and offered me a handkerchief. It's dead, I replied solemnly. Besides being a friend of mine, he was well aware of my situation. In fact, I was sure everyone in the neighborhood was aware of it. But no one wanted to help us unless we moved first. And standing against my dad was the scariest part of this situation. I am worried for my mom, I said. I left her behind. Axel didn't promise anything, but he cleaned my wound after my approval. What do you plan to do? Where are you staying tonight? I shrugged. Here, I guess. Oh no, you're not. He stood up and offered me a hand. Come on. Where? To my home. Stay at my place tonight. I have no morning classes tomorrow, so I will be with you. He shook his hand again, when I took a minute too long to respond. It'll be alright, Tony. You can trust me. Although Axel had probably heard about us in the situation a lot of times, this was the first time I had reached this point. I hadn't ever needed to run away from my home in the middle of the night before tonight. It was late at night, yet Axel's mom was awake. I wasn't sure why that was, but the silence in Axel's place seemed to mirror the silence in mine. I had texted my mom five minutes ago if she was alright, and three minutes later, she replied that she was alright, and that my dad had fallen asleep in the washroom. She left him there, worried that he might snap. Honestly, I couldn't care less. I wanted the cold and dirt to take his life. Axel had asked me to stand on the side of his bedroom. He promised that he'd sneak me in. Two minutes later, he opened his bedroom window and gave me a hand to help me in. It was a little torture. I was in pain and my body screamed in pain at such movements. Even so, I was grateful for the help. Sorry for all the mess, he said and gathered his books from the bed. College sucks, by the way. I do not recommend it. I gave a small chuckle. Shouldn't I study for it then? You should, it's important. I just don't recommend it. He stared at me in silence for a few seconds before he shook his head. I would have let you go to sleep like that, Tony, but I think it'd be better for you to take a shower. Or a bath. Whatever you prefer. He grabbed a few clean clothes from his closet and stood a little close. What if your mom finds out? I gingerly asked. Well, he began. She's in her bedroom and will probably be asleep in five minutes tops. But don't mind. She knows I have just returned from a run. I take a shower after my run, he explained. Here, wear this, all right? Don't worry much. Thank you, Axel, I replied, the tears hanging on my lashes. He smiled. Always right where you need me, Tony. He gently rubbed my head and ushered me to his bathroom. Use shampoo if you want. There's a body cleanser, too. It's my mom's, but I am sure she wouldn't mind. Thanks. I would be forever grateful for the little courage I had shown in middle school. It now seemed like a daring act, but then I just wanted to get to know one of the coolest students in high school. That's precisely why I dared to approach him in the cafeteria. Axel was nicer than his friends. He rubbed a hand on my head and promised that he would hang out with me. When I returned, Axel was sitting on the desk with his first aid kit. He looked over at me and nodded with a smile. Let's get you patched up, shall we? I wasn't sure if it was for his kindness or what, but I couldn't help but tell him tidbits of what happened at my home tonight. He nodded at each information and silently looked over at me when I told him it was because my dad found out I was gay. Axel was the first person I had come out to and he had been incredibly supportive, but that was probably because he was gay too. He patted the back of my hand and stood up. The wounds and bruises on my body hurt less now. Being gay isn't wrong, Tony. It is what it is. You don't get to choose. No, I agreed. It angered me that my dad didn't have the brain to accept that. You being gay isn't wrong, Tony. Your dad's just a little shit. Sorry. He is, I replied and poked my thigh with a finger. He is a little shit. Axel sighed with a smile. Do you want something to eat? No, I replied. I think I'd like to sleep. That's fine. You can take the bed and don't argue with me. I'll be on the couch. He patted the couch, grabbed a blanket, and dropped it on the couch. Are you sure? I asked. Yes. And we'll just go take a quick shower and return, alright? You can sleep. And so I did. 
The Knight family's kindness didn't stop at night. The next morning, Axel asked if I wanted to have breakfast in the bedroom or in the living area. And when I said, yes, anywhere would do, he brought me in the dining room. His sweet mom poured me a cup of coffee and made us some breakfast. There is no way she didn't know what had transpired. Yet she seemed so kind to me that I wanted my mom to feel the same kindness. As if reading my mind, she patted my head and said that I should bring my mom here someday. I shyly promised that I would. I was welcome there. I knew. I wasn't sure if you wanted mom to see you like that, Axel said. I know. I am grateful for that. I looked up at him. I suddenly wanted to hug him for everything he had done for me. Axel's gentleness and kindness never seemed to end. That seemed like the only way I could prove and show my gratitude to him. Thank you for everything, Axel. Anytime, Tony. He said and ran a hand through my hair. Come over to my place anytime you want, alright? You're always welcome. I nodded. My dad had left for his work by the time I returned home. My mom was okay, and she hugged me when I walked in. She then promised that she loved me regardless, and that she was sad that she found out about it in such a way. I washed my face and put on some light makeup. I had learned to do that early in my life. It did well in hiding the issues at home. Sometimes a few of my classmates took the hint, and sometimes they didn't. It all depended on how well I hid these marks. The school was open, and I couldn't risk missing more classes. When I returned from the school, I immediately locked myself in my bedroom. Dad would be home soon, and I didn't want to see and hear what new things he had to say to me. Avoiding him was the best solution. Thankfully, he seemed to forget all about me. I could still hear him loudly growling and barking at me, the claims that I'd ruined the family name and that it would have been better if he had a daughter. But he didn't really seem to bother me much again. Two days later, my mom suggested I bring something from the Knight family. I decided on chicken. I wasn't sure what else to get, so I brought raw chicken. When my mom saw it, she slapped a hand over her head with a small laugh. She said it was cute how unaware I was. My mom and I decided to go to Axel's home together. She said this way she could thank Axel and his mom for taking care of me. Eventually, however, Axel's mom announced that there was nothing at home to cook chicken pot pie, a dish that she decided would work well for the four of us. Axel and I were thus tasked to bring home those items. How long do you stay awake? Axel asked and grabbed some onions. I sleep when sleep comes to me, I replied. Usually it doesn't. He nodded as if he understood that well. Same. The mornings suck, though. They do, I agreed. Axel was taller and broader than me. It made sense why he chuckled a little, standing right behind me to grab the garlic powder on the top shelf. I had told him a few seconds ago that I couldn't grab it. I wasn't even sure why, but I felt a rush of emotions that I had rarely felt. This sudden feeling, though not always the same, wasn't new to me. Yet I knew it wasn't the same as I felt when my dad was around me, or when he stood a little too close for my comfort. The rush was the same, but the emotions weren't. Suddenly, the old feeling of needing to tell him about my crush on him, and to hug him and kiss him, returned with full force. I wanted to ask him if he felt the same. Throughout the years that I had known him, Axel had done a shit ton for me. He was incredibly kind, gentle, and generous with me. I had noticed him behaving with me differently than he did with others. I had seen him shy in places where I didn't think he would be. I held myself back from doing or saying anything stupid, however. It was neither the place nor the time for it. Ta-da! He grinned and showed me the little box. Great, I replied, and dipped my head low to will away my blush. We continued the rest of the shopping. Do you want to know how I met the guy, the one I kissed? He shrugged. It's your story to tell. Well, do you want to hear it or not? I asked. I am jealous. I don't want to hear it. He replied and gave a small laugh when I went silent. Kidding. Tell me if you want to. Hiding my blush in front of him was difficult, but I firmly told myself it wasn't impossible. He works a job, I began. I found him walking around the school. Tony, Axel said. It was laced with warning. Nothing happened. I mean, not a lot. I dipped my head. You're not supposed to kiss just about anyone, Tony. Not a working guy. You're what, 17? 
you have to be careful around these kinds of men. And what the hell was an adult man doing around the school? I shrugged. I kissed him. It was done. When things looked like they'd go a little out of the line, I asked him to stop. And he did. Axel shook his head. Still, it could have ended badly. I will not do it again, I promise. I'm not, Tony. I can't tell you what to do and what not to, but be careful, okay? I nodded with a smile. Do you think we can buy an ice cream? I will pay. He shook his head. Just one. I will pay. I'll admit, I am a little worried for myself. I agreed. Axel and I were at the park. He was jogging, and I was walking beside him. We had been interacting a lot in the last few days. While that night was probably one of the reasons, Axel told me his semester break was near, and so all he had to do was go through his readings. When he'd get fed up with so much studying, he'd seek me out similarly. I'd seek him out whenever things got a little intolerable at home. It seemed like we had formed a setting, and I held on to it tightly. I liked spending time with Axel, but I assumed everyone liked spending time with their crush. Axel, for me, seemed like the only good thing in my life. Well, besides my mom. And like any other desperate person, I wanted to hold on to him tightly. I just hoped this emotion was mutual. My math isn't going all too well. I admit it with shame. I could go on and say it was because of how things were at home. Being in an abusive family sucked, and learning didn't come easy. Not to me, no. But I had always been bad at math. I had no excuse. Oh? He whispered. I'm good at math. I'm grand at it. He laughed. Can you help me with it? He wiped the sweat from his face and eagerly nodded. I can, Tony. But in return, you must help me with my studies. I laughed. How can I help you? Just go through it with me. Quiz me or something. It'll help. I nodded. I can do that. He smiled down at me. I knew I could always count on you, Tony. Thus, the study sessions began. I informed my mom about it, and she seemed delighted to know that I wasn't wasting my time brooding over my dad. She said I didn't have the time, and getting good scores was the only way to getting out of the place. That didn't mean I had a lot of money saved up for college, no. In fact, I was pretty sure I would have to work to get through. But that didn't mean she didn't want me to get out of the house and away from dad. I was worried that my mom was holding on to my dad for my sake. Nothing would shame me more than knowing that I failed her. So although math sucked and little got into my head, I kept on the routine. Each time dad returned from his job, I'd either lock myself in my bedroom or sneak into Axel's bedroom. Dad didn't like Axel either, so I had to be careful about meeting him. Axel, for his part, was a good teacher. It was obvious he loved math. It was also obvious he would probably go on to do many great things, and even if not, then I was sure he was going to find himself a very nice job. I hope the same for myself. Maybe that way, I would be able to help us out. As weeks passed and Axel's intern exams neared, I sat by him to help him revise his stuff. I worried that it didn't help him much, but each time he would pat my hand and tell me the help meant a lot to him. See, that was what I meant when I said he was too good for me. After spending so many weeks with Axel, obviously my feelings for him developed more and more. The instant crush that I had on him no longer seemed innocent. Now that I spent most of my day in his bedroom, I'd observe him. The more I observed him, the more I realized how nice he is. In every way, in fact. Being friends with him, I knew he had a gentle nature and kind disposition. But now I could appreciate his physical handsomeness too. It had helped that he made me feel so safe around him. It reminded me of everything I wanted for myself. Each time I think about that, I would feel guilty that I might be using him to forget about the actual problems in my life. After all, just because I had been spending so many nights at Axel's place didn't mean my dad had gotten all better. He still disliked seeing me and still passed comments that both unnerved me and angered me. But that also seemed like a background noise. I spent most of my day thinking about Axel now, which also meant that I was worried my attraction to Axel was one-sided. I didn't have any reason to think that, but I worried nonetheless. Honestly, Axel said and yawned, I said a horror movie is the best. I agree, I replied, even though I knew I wouldn't be able to stand it. Really? He asked and stared at me, wide-eyed. Shall we then? 
Yeah, I shakily replied and passed an awkward grin. Axel smirked and shrugged. You know what? Horror movie it is. Oh, no. The intention was probably to tease me, but that didn't mean Axel didn't hold my hand when I screamed particularly loud at one of the jump scares. He even let me lean against him when I got sleepy. How was I supposed to doubt then that he probably felt the same? Maybe he was just scared that he'd cross a boundary by confessing. A few days after that movie night and another screaming match between my parents, Axel and I found myself outside his uni campus. he just returned from taking his first exam and was talking to his classmates. I stood on the other side of the road and watched him in silence. At that moment, it seemed like we were far apart. Axel came from a loving family, his dad was in the Navy, and his mom ran a literary website. As far as everyone was aware, there were a few issues in their home. Definitely not as much as in mine, though. I couldn't help but wonder if my familiar background mattered to him. Surely, that would determine whether my crush on him was futile. He bid his classmates bye and found me in the crowd. I waved at him, and he waved up. I smiled, and just like that, I left my worries at the back of my mind. I could muse over them later. You can go with your friends if you like, I said. Why, no. He shook his head and looked over the question paper in his hands. They are all returning home. Gotta prepare for the next battle. I nodded. Mine will come soon, too. And we will work on them, won't we? He looked at me and ran a hand through my hair. Yet again, it had become a habit of his. What? I like it when you do that, I said. Yeah. He stopped and brought his face close to mine. For a moment, I wondered the best possible thing. Was he going to kiss me? Was this the moment? But then he placed a kiss on my nose and said he was glad to hear that. Just like that, he returned to checking out his paper. Let's go eat something. Y yeah, I replied a little shakily. Tomorrow was Axel's second exam. Axel asked if I wanted to go on a drive. You can drive? I asked, and then laughed when he softly glared at me. I can. I have a license, thank you very much. He leaned against his bed and curiously looked at me. So, you want to go? Will we return on time? I knew we wouldn't. The real fun of a long drive would be during late evenings and nights. I didn't say anything else, however. I told him I just needed to inform my mom about it. He shrugged. My mom was talking to Axel's mom in the living room recently. She had been spending a lot of time at the night household. She just advised that I better return before my dad returned from his office. What was the first thing you'd do after getting out of there? Axel asked. Away from my dad? I asked. Everything that he doesn't want me to do. Axel laughed. And what that may be. Desserts, I began. Junk food. I don't remember the last time I ate them. Kissing or men. Seriously? He asked. I nodded. I didn't really feel embarrassed to admit it. It was what it was. He doesn't like when I eat that stuff. Says it's a waste of money. Bad for health, too. But sometimes it's all right. I suppose. I looked out the window. We can stop and eat some, he said. I nodded. I wondered if he would mention the last one, too. I didn't have the courage to bring it up. That'd be real nice. And of course, you should find a boyfriend to kiss. Bravely, I answered. I'm waiting on someone. Yeah? He asked. Yeah. Axel's exams were over. Mom was at Grandma's house for two days now, and Dad was angry. He had returned from the office mumbling about how much he hated corrupt employees and how insulting it felt to work for them. I quietly laid out the food Mom had asked me to cook for him and returned to my bedroom. I could feel his glare, so I made sure to lock the door. I didn't want his wrath today, but luck didn't seem to be on my side. He eventually got drunk and started throwing around items. At some point, when he called me names, I grabbed my books and my phone and sneaked out of the window. I wasn't in the mood to get beaten again. In the last few weeks, he hadn't beat me, so my body had kind of forgotten what the abuse felt like. I wanted it to stay that way. I carefully knocked on Axel's bedroom door, and he opened it quickly. Hey, is everything all right? He asked, clearly worried for me. As much as I want to answer him, I couldn't help but be distracted by him. He was nicely dressed today, 
He was set out to go somewhere, and I just come here to ruin his evening. What was wrong with me, making dumb impressions all the time? I will come back later. I don't want to. It's all right, Tony, he said and held my hand. I can stay. I don't want to ruin your plans, Axel. Things are already bad at home because of me, and I don't want to do the same in your life, too. Axel furrowed his eyebrows. You will not. He patted the bed. Sit. Tell me what happened, if you want to. We can watch a movie or read a book. Whatever you want. We can do that. I don't want to ruin your evening, I replied. He sighed. Okay, I will go, all right. But you can stay here, Tony. Would that be all right? I asked. Why not? Just let me lock the window. It's safe that way. He stood up and stared down at me. You're always welcome here, Tony. I will never turn you away. If it wasn't for this stupid party, I would have stayed with you. I will return early, though, I promise. That's all right. I am sleepy anyway. Are you sure? He asked. I nodded. Hours later, I heard the door opening. I was still a little sleepy, so I couldn't figure out where I was for a few seconds. Suddenly, it felt like it was my dad, but the door opened slowly and I knew my dad didn't have the patience to do that. Then I saw Axel tiptoeing into the room. He looked drunk, but still steady on his feet. I felt a little sweaty. I suddenly worried if he was upset. But then he muttered a low, Oh, did I wake you up? And I knew there was no reason for me to be scared around Axel. No, I mean, yes. He sighed and shook his head. Shame. I thought I could do better. He removed his jacket and fell down on the bed next to me. Can I sleep here tonight, Tony? I am too tired and lazy to make my couch. That's all right, I replied and blushed a little. My heart was racing and I knew what that was for. It's your bed after all. Right, he mumbled. Seconds later, he was snoring. Bravely, I grabbed the other half of the comforter and draped it over him. The next morning arrived quicker than I accepted. But that wasn't the only unexpected thing. When we woke up, I found myself draped over Axel, and our faces mere inches away. He had his arm around me, so I wasn't sure how much I should move. I stayed still and carefully looked at him. I can feel you looking at me. He sleepily mumbled. Sorry, I replied and blushed, but I didn't move away. Something compelled me to stay that way, even when Axel opened his eyes to smile at me. Perhaps it was because of that that I suddenly leaned up to plant a kiss on his mouth, despite the fact that I didn't know why exactly I kissed him, though that was probably because of my accumulated feelings for him. The act itself felt natural. Seconds later, I realized he wasn't responding. Shocked, I tried to pull back, but he held me around his waist. I I'm sorry, I said, and flushed red with shame. What had I done? What if I was unconsciously projecting my feelings on him? What if this kiss ended it all, instead of building up something new between us? Don't apologize, he said. I just have a bad morning breath. Huh? I was confused. I have a bad morning breath, he repeated. I wouldn't kiss myself. I, uh, don't mind? He gave a small chuckle and dropped his head back on the pillow. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Then we can kiss? And so we did. Ten minutes later, when I was still kissing Axel and sitting on his lap, the bedroom door opened and my mom called my name. I could hear Axel's mom behind her too. I quickly got off Axel and our moms coughed a little in shame. My mom said, she didn't sound apologetic. What's that? I asked, both worried and embarrassed, and oh, my life never could get boring. It took some time for me to finally come to terms with the truth. Mom had not only filed for divorce, but she had also lodged a complaint against Dad for domestic violence. It didn't just concern her, but also me. All I had to do, she said, was to give the cops the truth. After that, she promised we would be free. She said she couldn't hide it from Grandma, her mom, I told Axel. We were sitting on the swings, it was past ten, and Dad was in the cell. I had a lot of conflicting thoughts in my head. Not only had I shared my first kiss with Axel some days ago, but I had also been removed from my dad's abuse on the same day. They were polar opposite experiences. 
I wasn't sure what to make of them. She made a brave decision, Axel replied. She could have made that earlier, I said bitterly. Hey now. He grabbed my hand and rubbed circles on my palm. It's over. I just wish I didn't have to go through that at all. I knew I was being irrational. My mom was just as much a victim of my dad's abusive tantrums as I was. In fact, she had dealt with it longer than I had. The very awareness brought a flush of shame to my cheeks. I was being ungrateful. It'll be all right. I will have to leave, I replied. Axel smiled. That's the process, yes? But that doesn't mean you can't come over to my place anymore. I looked up at him. Would that be all right, really? Yeah, why not? I like that then. I'm pretty sure that's because your exams are soon going to be here. Oh, I replied. I remember, Tony. Don't worry. And, just like always, he dropped a soft kiss on my cheek. And that's how my simple routine of staying over at Axel's place continued. My parents finally got divorced. It was over, and Jill was no longer my dad. The court case against him is still running, even months later. But our case seems strong, so there's a good chance Jill would be in jail for some time. Mom has started spending more and more time with my grandparents, and I am left to go back and forth between our home and my grandparents' home, especially when I'm not at Axel's place. On that topic, Axel and I are still not dating, but we do live like boyfriends, so I guess that's a good start. We spend loads of time together, and he has promised to never force me into a relationship with him. He said it's okay to take my time. Is it always good to take some time for yourself? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.